All right, so first of all, I would like to thank the state of Arizona, the Arizona Biomedical Research Center uh, for sponsoring these events. Okay, um, so I think this is a really important topic and I think it's great that we're seeing the, um, the involvement of, of all of you here in Arizona. Um, this is some of our work from the Veterans Administration uh, we wanted to look at the incidence of cardiac amyloidosis over the past 10 years, and it's gone up approximately fourfold. And I think that's not surprising given the emergence of new therapies and diagnostics for this disease. Uh, but relevant to today is that black veterans have approximately three times higher incidence of cardiac amyloidosis compared to white veterans. And I think it's clear that this, this disease disproportionately affects uh, black males. And this work has also been supported by other work in non-VA populations such as Medicare. This is some work that we presented at the American Heart Association. And the top figure shows the geographic variation in different states in the United States. Uh, and you can see that the, the, the colors go from dark blue to light to lighter, um, and red being the highest uh, color. And the, the, the incidence of cardiac amyloidosis was highest in the Northeast and followed by the Midwest. But uh, interestingly, the, the, there was a wide disparity between the Northeast and the South. Uh, and furthermore, in figure two, this disparity uh, was accentuated if you just look at black veterans. So the Midwest had the highest incidence of cardiac amyloidosis, followed closely by the Northeast. And this was far exceeding the rates in the South as well as some of the Western states, which are still in deep blue. And so clearly this shows there's a great variation in care, and there's probably opportunities for improvement uh, in care. And we still have to investigate uh, what are the reasons for this. So with that, I'd like to introduce today's moderators. Dr. Paul Underwood is a cardiologist who originally set out to become a general practitioner in his hometown of Knoxville. He completed cardiology training at Cleveland Clinic and internal medicine at Mayo Graduate School of Medicine. He's been practicing interventional cardiology since 1994 and clinical research. In 2009, he transitioned to the medical device industry spending the last 14 years with Boston Scientific. And recently, he embarked on a new venture, Cardio MedSci, where he can use his experience to reach a broader clientele and help to reduce health disparities. As a member of the Arizona Latin American Medical Association and former president of the Association of Black Cardiologists. He's joined by Dr. Mayo Osunji, MBBS PhD, who's a senior associate consultant at Mayo Clinic's Department of Clinical Genomics and director of the Children's Tumor Foundation Neurofibromatosis Clinic at Mayo Clinic, Arizona. He completed his medical degree from University of London and PhD degree from University of Cambridge, where he is an award-winning young life scientist. He completed residency training at Mayo Clinic and postdoctoral research at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. He's board certified in medical genetics and the Royal College of Pathologists. He's certified director of the American Board of Bioanalysis as high complexity laboratory director for molecular diagnostics and chemistry. I could go on and on, so I wanna welcome both of you and it's really a pleasure to have your expertise uh, to, to moderate this event. Thank you uh, very much, um, Dev, and um, it certainly is an honor to be before you and to see how Arizona is actually progressing and breaking down some of the barriers of technology that have been holding us back. Certainly want to thank you for the interest that you have in this, this topic. It's very important and certainly very, very timely. And um, the format that's been set up has been a debate format. So it's my pleasure to introduce, um, I guess, a couple of the, um, I won't say the panelists, but um, a couple of the, the contestants here. And uh, <laughs> we'll certainly want you to, to make sure that 
that you keep them on their toes uh, through their presentations as well as during the Q and A's afterwards. Um, we'll have a chance to actually uh, put them to the test and see um, see who actually wins this debate. So first, I'd like to introduce Dr. Mark Silver. Um, He's a cardiologist and he served as a chief in the Division of Medical Services, chairman of the Department of Medicine, and was founder of the Heart Failure Institute at Advocate Christ Hospital Center in Oakland, uh, Illinois. Um, he was a foundational member of the advanced heart failure and transplant teams at Loyola, and he's an international leader in, um, in heart failure in the U.S. and has worked very closely with the Heart Failure Society of America, the American College of Cardiology, and the American Heart Association uh, to help develop guidelines for over a decade. Um, he was the editor-in-chief of the Congestive Heart Failure uh, Journal. Uh, he's a long-established interest in heart failure, chronic disease management, and education, and we're fortunate to have him join us here in the Valley from the Midwest, uh, where he's been working with us, um, I think, through the banner system. Um, so this is just fantastic, and I really look forward to, uh, to the discussion. And, uh, thank you, Paul. We have a lot of high caliber speakers today, and it promises to be a very interesting debate. Well, I will start by introducing Dr. Brandish. Dr. Brandish is the director of ASU Genetic Counseling Program, clinical professor at the College of Health Solutions. She has 27 years of experience as a genetic counselor, and she uh, was previously at Mayo Clinic for 13 years, specializing in cancer neurology and cardiology. She completed her PhD degree at ASU in biology and society. I also have the pleasure of introducing Sonia Sabrowski, who is a very, very intelligent genetic counselor. She is at Mayo Clinic, she's an instructor at Mayo Clinic, and uh, she has keen interest in cardiogenetics and neurogenetics. It promises to be a very interesting debate. Great, and then I'll just close off with um, introducing Dr. Andrew Bashara. Uh, he's an advanced heart failure and transplant specialist at St. Joseph's Hospital um, here in Phoenix. Uh, he's certified certain cardiovascular disease and advanced heart failure and transplant cardiology, and he carries a certificate in echocardiography and nuclear cardiography. <clears throat> uh, he specializes in treating patients with both ischemic and non-ischemic cardiomyopathies, end-stage heart failure, cardiogenic shock, heart transplant, and both temporary and durable mechanical circulatory support. Uh, this will certainly prove to be a very interesting discussion, and I'm looking forward to the, to the evening as it moves on. Thank you. <clears throat> I think um, first we have the um, the pros. Is that is that what's up? Okay, so pros are up.